Hey, Jeff Montgomery here from Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Today we've got a precision rifle build to put together for a customer. Uh, it's going to be based on a Defiance Anti-X action made uh, right up north to our neighbors in Montana, Columbia Falls, Montana. Uh, excellent uh, action builders. I've uh, assembled a whole bunch of precision rifles off of these actions. They're uh, deviants and the ruckus and the Oh, uh, a lot of antis um, and whatnot. The uh, anti-X is a special blend of 11 herbs and spices of some sort of uh, alloys to make it lightweight. Um, they also have uh, lightning cuts all over the place. So I'll get a close up on this and go through kind of the features of the action uh, and uh, what, it fe what it offers uh, a shooter. Uh, next up, uh, we're gonna be using proof research carbon fiber barrel this one is a 20 excuse me here this one is a 24 inch seven and a half twist five groove carbon fiber sendero profile uh just like defiance i've chambered hundreds of proof research barrels they're they're excellent barrels they all shoot amazingly well um very high quality Stainless steel alloy with a very beautiful carbon fiber wrap. So that will be actually fit and chambered to the Defiance in 6.5 PRC. And on the muzzle end, we're going to be installing a Thunder Beast Arms CB, sorry, 30 CB. So it's a 30 caliber uh, suppressor adapter. So anyway, uh, got all my tooling and measuring equipment laid out uh, to do the job, and uh, like I said, we'll just uh, we'll just kind of walk you through the process of how this is done here at the new shop on the new uh, Grizzly G O five O nine G Grizzly gunsmithing lathe. So uh, so yeah, I'm gonna set back up, get you some close ups of things, and we'll go through the components and kind of my process for for building precision rifles um, no stone left unturned uh, no corners cut uh, my process takes quite a bit longer than i guess maybe some guys may do but uh it's all about precision so um my methods are tried and true i've learned from some of the greats in the industry and uh, kind of try to pick and choose some of those techniques and uh, mold them through my own experience over the years. And I think I got a pretty good process going on here. So, uh, so yeah, um, like I said, we'll get, uh, we'll get some close ups of the components here and uh, go from there. All right. Starting with the heart and soul of the rifle is the defiance. Anti X action made in columbia falls montana really nice company to deal with had nothing but good experiences with those guys so this action features its uh traditional blend of uh alloys it's not titanium but it is a lightweight alloy um much uh just uh strong enough to contain the uh, working pressures of the cartridges and and whatnot but has all sorts of lightning cuts, um, lightening that is, to reduce uh, reduce weight where they can. So we've got a deep deep pocket here in the back rail, integral rail. All this is machined out of one piece of steel. Uh, integral uh, recoil lug. Like I said, Picatinny rail on top. You've got a nice gap so you can shove your thumb in there to, to load rounds if you're running this in a BDL format. Uh, nitrided bolt, very nice black nitrided bolt. They uh, all feature a standard bolt release, side bolt release, and stop. So one simply just pushes the button, the bolt comes right out. So traditional uh, Remington style bolt uh, with a cocking piece in the back, shroud. Uh, this one does have an M16 style extractor and a traditional <clears throat> spring-loaded ejector on the face of the bolt. 
So to prepare this, to take some measurements and actually chamber it, um, it's best to get rid of the firing pin assembly. So I have a little tool that does that. It's a little, little tool I made in, in school when I took the CNC shop or class at uh, Colorado School of Trades. This was one of our projects. And man, this thing's come in handy. I've used it probably almost a thousand times now. I mean, just, just tons, of, tons, of, uh, tons of use out of this guy. Uh, I believe it's based off the Kleinendorf <clears throat> style um, firing pin assembly <clears throat> removal tool. But regardless, it works awesome. So my homemade one will suit the purpose just fine. Being aluminum, uh, it does tend to leave a little aluminum schmutz on the nitride. So I just kind of mask it to prevent that as best I can. So <clears throat> the tool <clears throat> basically oops, just fits over the uh, bolt shroud and has this little hook comes forward, hooks onto the cocking piece, pulls back, and allows one to unscrew this from the bolt body. Okay, <clears throat> so with that out, move on. Very nicely machined bolt. I believe these are all machined out of one piece of steel as well of some sort, but again, it's extremely light. Very nice uh, spiral fluting cuts all around the bolt body. And then more skeletonization here, hollowed out bolt knob. So yeah, that's it there. Um, again, with the action, you've got a standard Remington style, one and one sixteenths, by 16 thread tenon. They do provide a nice big relief groove on the inside so it doesn't have to be cut into the barrel. So that's nice. And what else here? So this is their medium length action, meaning the ejection port and the feeding port. It's uh, uh, intended for a BDL style. So that's what this cut is. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different for a DBM magazine system, but this is for the internal box mag with the hinged floor plate, this cut here. That's about it on the action. So go ahead and do what we normally do. I have uh, my chambering form here that I like to record all the um, spe specifications, all my measurements. So we're going to take some measurements to establish the exact dimensions that we need for the barrel tenon. So before we do that, a little close up of the proof research. They always provide this big stub in the front and it's got the barrel uh, information on it. So obviously proof research, 264, which would be the cartridge caliber. The twist rate, which in this case is one point sorry, one in 7.5 inches, the barrel seal number, which I always record, and then um, it reminds you to remove this portion. So this will be cut off here at this little groove, and this is where the threads will be cut and the crown. Um, like any barrel manufacturer, part of their uh, manufacturing operations, they jam real, real big, heavy centers in, into the ends of these. Uh, so the rifling's a little bit messed up on uh, the first oh inch or so. They always say cut off about an inch. Now the uh, <clears throat> the chamber, the breech end, this will all all this material will be removed probably till you know somewhere in there. So we're not cutting anything here. I'll, I'll face this off proper, but no no length will be cut off here. This will all be the breech end, and like I said, we'll cut this off. And the other thing I always do is send this back with the customer as a keepsake, just like the barrel uh, stub or uh, other manufacturers print this stuff on the uh, breech end. So I'll slice that off and, and give it to a guy. I don't know if he wants to make a necklace out of it or something, but it's theirs. They paid for the barrel. They may as well, may as well have it. Okay, so there's the barrel. <clears throat> and then the Thunder Beast Arms CB, 30 CB, and a 5.8 24 thread configuration. 
this is for specifically for Thunder Beast suppressors. And when it's not in, when it doesn't have a suppressor on it, it's a muzzle brake. So that's the top, bigger flats on the bottom. These ports are 90 degrees side to side. There's no angular uh, disbursement of gas. So uh, effectiveness on the muzzle brake itself is probably not as good as something dedicated as a muzzle brake. But uh, so at least it'll make your rifle louder, you know, if you don't want to use that suppressor and piss off your, your neighbors. So uh, <laughs> anyway, very high quality though. Um, I've always been impressed with Thunder Beast as well. I own one of their um, seven inch <clears throat> 30 cal cans and uh, love it. So so always uh, always happy to see Thunder Beast in the, in the build. All right, so we'll go over to the vise and uh, take some measurements and record that data. We'll uh, get all of our dimensions established for the barrel. Okay, another thing to do before really anything else is preparing the bolt. So we removed the firing pin assembly here. We're also gonna remove that uh, spring-loaded ejector. That'll interfere with uh, when we're head spacing um, the feel that you get. Um, you don't want any pressure on that gauge when you're doing your final head space because you want that bolt to have a tiny bit of resistance on the go gauge. And then obviously a hard stop on a, on a no-go no -go gauge. So uh, we're going to get that out to eliminate any false readings on that. So that's real easy, just like any standard Remington. You've got a roll pin uh, through one of the lugs that's uh, just a cross pin that holds the guy in there. So I'm just going to take a punch, start a punch and get this going, get this moving out. without losing the pin, okay. So I'll set that aside and we'll put this in a uh, Ziploc bag. So, so I remove the punch, the ejector comes right out and with its spring followed behind it. All right, so insert the bolt back in and we want the bolt to be as far back as it goes. There's a little, little wiggle clearance there. So I'm just gonna get it held in the vise here so I can use two hands. And then just assure that the bolt is in the rearward position. Okay, so everything's clean. I just went ahead and blew everything off, off camera <clears throat> just to keep them Keep them nice and clean. Don't want any false readings. I'll get my clipboard here, pencil, and my depth micrometer. All right. So the closest, the first closest measurement would be the bolt nose itself. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. And I go around at least three points to see if there's a lower side or a higher side. But in this case, they're, it's equal, which I would expect from Defiance. And it looks like we're at <clears throat> 810. I don't know if you can see that, but 810 thousandths. Just verify. 8, 10. <clears throat> 8, 10. So I call that C. So, measurement C is 8, 10. Measurement B is going to be the bolt face itself where the cartridge sits. So this is one of the uh, head face measurements. Go ahead and go down and check that. And just like before, a couple different areas. So there's a little bit lower reading right around the ejector. And that's probably just from steel being swaged up very slightly. We're talking about a thousandth of an inch or a half thousandth. So, yeah. So the lowest reading I get is 
<clears throat> excuse me, 66, 966. Let's confirm. Nine sixty six on B. Okay, now the only other measurement to do is from here to the front of the recoil lug. So we'll just measure literally from the bolt nose to the bolt front of the bolt surface itself. And this is usually one fifty on the money, so we'll just verify that. 149 on that side and 150 on that side. So, so we'll call it 149. You always want to go with the smaller number. 149 plus the measurement we got to the bolt nose, which would be 810. equals 959. And that's pretty much spot on for all the defiances I've worked with. 959, 960, 958, 957, somewhere in that kind of vicinity. Okay, so that's all the measurements we need. Now we'll just do some calculations to get these dimensions for our barrel breech. Okay, one extremely critical an important part uh, before I do any barrel work is I have a bore scope and uh, I just like to run in and check the bore for any imperfections, any oh, flaws, um, just to ensure before I do all this labor, that the barrel bore is actually good. So we're just going to go in with the bore scope. Feed it in nice and smooth. And see if we can find any problems in this bore. Visually. Going in. Things looking real good. Saw something there. Oh, that's just some dust. <clears throat> okay. So here at the muzzle end, that's what I was talking about earlier. They just shove a, a center in there to be able to do the contouring and things. So that all that will be removed and cut off. So now that I'm at the end, I'm going to rotate 90 degrees and come back. So we're going to check 360 degree all the way, all the way around this bore. Okay, 90 degrees, back in. And this is what a high quality match grade barrel should look like on the inside. I'll probably do some more work with this bore scope showing you the Kind of comparing you a factory barrel to a precision, high quality match grade barrel. And there are massive differences. Very clear which one is superior. Okay, one more time. Coming all the way down. Looking real good in there. Should be a great barrel. All right, 90 degrees and come back. Okay, <clears throat> there we go. This barrel checks out visually. So now we can proceed to install it in the lathe and start uh, machining.